Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Shones. Today we have a very special story. This is the day before Thanksgiving and we're reading Thanksgiving stories from the Topaz Storybook. And today I think that this kind of best encapsulates Thanksgiving. And it's a tale by Catherine Grace Holbert. And I I really do truly hope that you enjoy it, especially on this Thanksgiving that will be very different for many of us. This is A Turkey for the Stuffing. It always made Ben feel solemn to watch the river in a storm. Today it was gray and rough and noisy, and the few boats which went down toward Lake Huron pitched about so that their decks slanted first one way, then another, and their sides were coated with ice. Grandma, what day is today? he asked at last, turning from the stormy river to glance about their warm, comfortable little room. Wednesday, Benny, answered the small old woman who crouched over the stove. Then tomorrow will be Thanksgiving Day, and the Rosses are going to have a turkey, said Ben excitedly. What are we going to have, Grandma? Mrs. Moxton looked over her glasses at her grandson's small, thin figure in its patched and faded clothes and at his bright, eager face. Sonny, dear, what do you think Gran has for Thanksgiving? She asked gently. The expectant look faded from Ben's face, and he winked hard to keep the tears from running over. He did not need to be told how bare of dainties their cupboard was, for everything there he had brought with his own hands. Bacon and smoked fish enough for all winter were stored away. Flour, potatoes, and a few other vegetables were there. Tell me about a real Thanksgiving dinner, the small boy begged after the first disappointment had been bravely put away. Mrs. Moxon took off her spectacles and leaned back cautiously in her broken rockered chair. I remember one Thanksgiving, when your pa was alive, we had a dinner fit for a king. There was a ten-pound turkey with bread stuffing. I put the sage and onions into the stuffing with my own hands. We could have some stuffing, interrupted Ben eagerly. So we could, Sonny, so we could. It takes you to think of things. And Mrs. Moxon affectionately patted the little brown hand on her knee. It never would have come to me that we might have turkey stuffing even if we didn't have a turkey. Ben beamed with delight at this praise. And was there anything else besides the turkey and the stuffing, Grandma? And yes, child. There were turnips and mashed potatoes and mince pie. And your pa got two pounds of grapes, though grapes were expensive at that time of year. Yes, nobody could ask for a better dinner than that. We could have one just like it, all but the turkey and the mince pie and the grapes, said Ben, hopefully. So we can, and we will too, child, answered the old woman. Trust you for making the best of things. And the two smiled at each other happily. Next morning, Ben watched his grandmother add an egg, some sage, and chopped onion to a bowl full of dry bread, pour boiling water over it, and put the mixture in the oven. Your father said I made the best turkey stuffing he ever ate, she said with satisfaction. We'll see how it comes out, Benny. I can't hardly wait until dinner time, Ben said, with an excited skip. I believe I'll go down to the beach and pick up driftwood for a while. You call me when things are most cooked, Grandma. The storm of the day before had left many a bit of board or the end of a log on the beach, and that would be just the thing for Mrs. Moxton's stove. Ben worked so hard that he did not notice a big barge that was coming slowly down the river, towing two other boats behind it, until he heard a voice ask, Hello, kid. What makes you work so hard on Thanksgiving Day? Then he straightened up to see the boat's captain standing near its pilot house and shouting through a great trumpet. I'm waiting for dinner to cook, Ben answered in his piping voice. Can't hear you, roared the captain. Run home and get your horn and talk to me. Ben ran up the little hill to Mrs. Ross's and borrowed her trumpet or megaphone. One's voice sounds much louder when these are used, and they are to be found at every house on the shores of St. Mary's. Boats and those on the land often want to say, How do you do? to each other. It is all Ben could do to hold the great tin trumpet on straight, for it was nearly as long as he was. 
I'm waiting for dinner to cook, the boy shouted again, and this time the captain heard him. Going to have turkey, I suppose, the captain asked. No, but we're going to have turkey stuffing, answered Ben with pride. Turkey stuffing but no turkey, if that isn't the best I ever heard. The captain had dropped his trumpet and doubled up with sudden laughter. Luckily, Ben did not hear. What else are you going to have? he called when he had repeated the joke about him. Mince pie without any mince meat? No, sir. Ben's voice was shrill but clear. My father had mince pie for Thanksgiving dinner once, though. Did, did he? The captain dropped his trumpet again. That boy's all right, he said to the first mate. He's too plucky to be laughed at. I'm going to send him some turkey for his stuffing, Morgan. Tell the cook to get ready half a turkey and a mince pie and say, Morgan, have him send up one of those small baskets of grapes. We'll tie them to the piece of a plank, and they'll float ashore all right. Tell the cook to hurry or be far too downstream for the boy to get the things. Then he raised his trumpet again. Say, kid, can you row that boat that's tied to your dock? Yes, sir. Well, you hurry out into the river, and I'll put off a float with some things for your Thanksgiving dinner. You're going to have some turkey for that stuffing. You may be sure Ben lost no time in pushing the rowboat off into the stream where the end of a plank and its delicious load were soon bobbing up and down on the water. How he did smack his lips when he lifted them into the boat, and how pleased he was for Grandma. First the stuffing, and then the turkey. My, ain't I lucky. He did not know that the captain had said he was plucky, and that luck is very apt to follow pluck. That is a turkey for the stuffing. The story, really, I mean, this is the most Thanksgiving story one can picture, isn't it? And this is going to be a difficult and different kind of Thanksgiving for many of us here. And to all of you, I say, be safe and thank goodness for your loved ones. This is Dan Scholes for The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always... Thank you so much for listening.